What's going on everybody? Beastly Gamer here. Welcome to the channel. I wanted to make a quick video in reference to some earth shattering news. Uh, if you guys have been <laughs> under a rock, you probably don't know. But during the PlayStation Experience 2016, my world was completely shattered when Sony announced the reveal or showed the reveal of the very early footage cinematic from The Last of Us 2. This cinematic I totally was not expecting. If you want to see my reaction, uh, there is a reaction video. I was sitting with my daughter watching it, did not expect it. I made a joke about The Last of Us and it ended up being The Last of Us. So it was one of those crazy, crazy situations that happened. I gotta say I'm really, really uh, amazed at the work that comes out of Naughty Dog. Not only did they just finish Uncharted 4, they're working on another Uncharted game, and they're working on The Last of Us 2, which, might I say, the cinematic looks totally insane in 4K. I have a 4K laptop, and I watched it in 4K, and it was just breathtakingly beautiful. Uh, I wanted to give you guys an article uh, and, and share it with you guys based on what has been said by Neil Druckmann uh, and Ashley Johnson about this game. They had kind of a Q&A after the reveal, and they talked to Game Informer. And I wanted to show you guys what they what they said about this upcoming Last of Us game and then give you guys my thoughts on what I saw in the reveal and what my thoughts are on what this game is going to be. So I'll drop a link in the description. This game is about hate. Startling new details for The Last of Us Part 2. Sony closed out this year's PlayStation Experience Showcase with a brief look at The Last of Us Part 2. And while game director Neil Druckmann says it, it's, quote, a ways off from release, end quote, he couldn't wait to reveal it. Following the showcase, Druckmann discussed more of his and Naughty Dog's vision for the forthcoming sequel and was joined by the game's leading voice talent, Troy Baker, played, who plays Joel, and Ashley Johnson, who plays Ellie, in a panel moderated by Game Informer's own editor-in-chief, Andy McNamara. The panel began with Druckmann boldly saying, quote, this game is about hate, end quote, whereas the first game was about love and friendship and the bond between them. He then unveiled that the sequel was played via Ellie's perspective, a reveal that brought a boisterous cheer from the packed arena of thousands of fans. Taking place a few years after the last game, Ellie is now 19. Druckmann said he feels the same way some fans do about revisiting these characters. He believes in this new story so much, explaining that The Last of Us is Ellie and Joel's story and no one else's. Johnson was asked about working with Druckmann and she said that this project and the original Last of Us were special in a different way because it felt like a true collaboration between Druckmann, Naughty Dog, and the actors. Baker added that Joel is the character he misses the most and wonders what he's up to. He added that Naughty Dog feels like a family to him. He said that he almost didn't get the role out of his own foolish fear of not being the right age for Joel. He said he almost walked out of the door when he saw the other people in the lobby who were up for the part. But the casting director called his name before he reached the door. He learned valuable life lessons from both the game and this moment, such as trusting yourself. When asked about Ellie's shaking hand in the trailer, Johnson said she couldn't say much about it, but did say, quote, she's gone through some shit, end quote. Drugman added that this singular scene shown dates back two years to the time where he sent Johnson the idea of a musical sequence. The Last of Us Part Two uses new performance capture technology and the most advanced character models Naughty Dog has ever made. We were shown a brief demo of the technology in action and saw Johnson acting out facial motions which were reproduced in real time on Ellie's character model. Drugman said it's easier to find moments in an original game and that there's a fear and danger of trying to replicate those moments in a sequel. He's hoping that he can create moments that are just as powerful, but without treading the same territory. Both Johnson and Baker say Druckmann is their favorite director to work with. Johnson in particular emphasized just how much fun he is to work alongside. He gives them the freedom to experiment and will often weigh their opinions in the flow of scenes. Druckmann revealed that Gustavo Santolala is returning to score The Last of Us Part II, which is great, great, great news, and concluded the panel by saying that Ellie and Joel are the heart of this series. It's about human relationships with theirs being the focus of this story. Now, I don't know how much of the trailer you guys watched. I watched it quite a few times. Um, the first time I saw it, I pretty much had tears in my eyes. I couldn't believe it. Uh, but I was looking at some of the things that were going on in the trailer and it's led me to think that unbelievably, one of these characters might not even be alive. When you see the trailer, it starts by showing Ellie's trembling hand 
You can see blood under her fingernails and obvious trauma to her neck where she was probably bit by someone. And yet later on in the trailer, you see blood trickle down the side of her head as she begins to play the guitar. Afterwards, you see Joel walking from outdoors with his gun in his hand, walking past uh, mutilated bodies that look like they went through hell. Ellie killed these people, obviously, because right by Ellie's feet, you see a machete and blood. And Joel walks into the room where Ellie is, and he said, What are you doing, kiddo? What are you doing? Is what he asked her. And that implies that he didn't know what just happened. Like, he doesn't know what is going on around him. And it's more of a memory than Joel actually being there. Another thing you might notice in this trailer is when Joel walks into the room, it doesn't show his face directly, but from the side of his face, you can see that he looks very similar to the way he did the last time we saw him in The Last of Us. His hair hasn't turned gray. Ellie's aged five or six years, but Joel looks pretty much the same. He's even wearing the same jacket, which is pretty telling to me that Joel might not be a living character in this game, and Troy Baker might be reprising his role in flashbacks and in sequences in, in which Joel is talking to Ellie, being there for Ellie in tough times because it's a traumatic world and, and these people in this, this game have gone through a lot. And the, the seminal statement that was made by Neil Druckmann in this article is that this game is about hate. It's not about love, it's not about caring, it's about hatred. And when you see Ellie's face, when she looks at Joel and she says, I swear I'm going to get every single one of them. She's going to get every last one of someone. And she looks like she has nothing but vengeance and revenge in her eyes. I'm led to believe, and I might be wrong, that someone, a group of people, raided Tommy's town, Tommy's little sanctuary, who is Joel's brother, killed everyone, including Joel. And Ellie survived and became the badass that she's going to be in this game. Now, I know some people are going to say, Beastly, this is blasphemy. You can't even say this. Joel is just too much of an important part of this game. I agree with you, but I'm being very practical and I'm being real with you guys. When you look at this trailer, when Joel walks in and he has the same coat from the past, he walks past dead bodies. You know, it's not what Joel does. Joel is always very, very aware. He's always very defensive. He's always looking for somebody to come out of the shadows and attack. This Joel walked in without a care in the world, holding a gun, the way that Ellie would remember him, and asked her what she's doing. And she looked over at the what I consider a memory and said she's going to kill everyone who killed him. I want to know what you guys think. I really do. I'm more excited than anything now about this game. There's a lot of things at the PlayStation Experience that really shook the foundation of my living room today. It was an amazing, amazing PSX. It completely uh, made up for last year. Last year's PSX wasn't exciting. This one here was earth shattering. It was so, it caught me off guard so much, I wasn't even planning on watching it. Didn't even plan on it. My wife, she said, hey babe, uh, you know, the PSX is getting ready to start. Let's watch it. And I was like, oh, it's, it's today? I hadn't even been paying attention because last year I was let down so much. But this year, they completely destroyed me, and I'm so happy about it. The Last of Us 2 is happening. It's going to be an amazing game. It looks like Naughty Dog, Neil Druckmann, Bruce Straley are back on top of their A game. Blows my mind. A new Uncharted game and a new Last of Us game. I'm thinking The Last of Us will probably see it 2019. I couldn't imagine it before 2019. Probably holiday 2019. But you guys let me know what you think in the comments below. The Last of Us Part 2 is about hatred. What can that mean? What did you glean from this revealed trailer? Do you think that it's possible that Joel is dead? Do you think that both of these characters are living characters? They did say the game is from Ellie's point of view. It's Ellie's perspective now. That, to me, signifies that Joel might not be a living character. I hope I'm wrong, but looking at the trailer, I think I might be right. You guys, let me know what you think below. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you found it informative. And if you did, please give a thumbs up. Show support for the channel. Join the Facebook group. Follow me on Twitter. And you can support my channel by visiting BeastlyGamer.com. Thank you all for watching. I'm the Beastly Gamer. And I'll see you guys next time.